And I, ha I have to ask you, James, I mean, if you look at, say, the gay community, gay men, for instance, which is different from trans and different from queer, I mean, they spent, they had such a hard time um, in the late 20th century with genuine homophobes calling them all pedophiles and, 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 well, groomers and things like that. And they had to work really, really, really hard to dispel that very wicked stereotype. Now we have the, the T and the Q of the LGBTQ, etc. doing all of the things that make it seem like the whole of the alphabet community are groomers and the P word. I, I mean, how, how has this been allowed to go full circle? And do you reckon this is actually going to affect specifically gay acceptance in the future? It's already affecting gay acceptance, mm. which is is a tragedy. It is. Um, the fact of the matter is the way that this happens is the activist movements that are genuinely seeking civil rights are filled with activists who, when they get civil rights, go home. Mm. We got what we wanted, and the point was so we can live our lives. The radicals never go home. They latch onto the side of these movements. They're often, you know, more bodies and more energy, but and sometimes more resources, but they're also often a problem. I've spoken with many gay activists from the 90s who said that they had to fight the the religious right on the one hand and these queer theorists on the other hand oh, who gosh. were actually openly against marriage equality, openly against acceptance because they want it to remain radical and fringe. That's what queer theory is about. Mm. Queer is not an individual identity. It's defined by David Halperin. He's a queer theorist. As a political position, it is not even defined as an identity at all. It's defined as a political position in its own definition that is opposed to the normal, the legitimate, and the dominant. So normal legitimate, those two things in addition to, you know, dominance have to be destroyed. Mm. Uh, and it's a political position to do that. This doesn't serve gay interests. It doesn't serve anybody's interests, as a matter of fact, except for the handful of activists who end up profiting off of it with power or, or fun, uh, fame and fortune. So um, it's very distinct. I mean, mm. Halpern's very clear. His first, where he defines the word queer for the first time in the queer theory literature, this, this, the paragraph begins, unlike gay identity. It's mm. extremely explicit that yeah. it's not the same thing. Um, the Drag Queen Story Hour, people say the same thing. Here's another line from that paper that's just wonderful. It is undeniable that Drag Queen Story Hour participates in many tropes of empathy, talking about generating empathy and visibility for LGBTQ. Mm. Participates in many of these tropes of empathy from the marketing language the program uses to a selection of books. Much of this is strategically done in order to justify its educational value. However, we suggest that Dry Queen Story Hour fulfills other roles. Oh, gosh. What do you do again? It's like this isn't representing anyone's interest. And they tell you out loud, we're yeah. lying to you. And then if you tell people they're lying to you, you're the conspiracy theorist. Yeah. Um, I've made an entire career out of reading things to people that I just bothered to believe that they don't want to believe. Mm. It's really a fantastic, <laughs> fantastic thing. But Sounds fantastic. Certainly, this is what has happened is it piggybacked on a movement that achieved its civil rights goals. And then people went back to living normal life, but the radicals mm. never stopped. Yeah.